Hi, I'm Alan Weaver, and I wanted to take a few moments to share five steps that you can do to overcome fear. Often it is fear more than any other emotion that derails our destiny. Now I'm not talking about that healthy sense of fear that says don't stick your wet finger into an electrical socket. That's good fear. I'm talking about that other type of fear. You know what it is. The kind where we look back at our lives and see so many things we could have done but didn't do, not because we didn't have the opportunity, but because we were afraid. But fear doesn't have to rule our lives any longer. The truth is, the more we face our fears, the less fearful they become. Growing up, I was often afraid of failing at tasks. So when things got hard, like piano lessons, I just quit. When I was afraid of the unknown, I would sit and let opportunities pass me by. Like the time as a high school student when I had the opportunity to visit another country. I rationalized me not going as, I'm not interested. But in reality, I was afraid. And when my younger brother had an opportunity to study abroad when he got to high school, you know what he did? He went. Talk about a teachable moment. Now, I don't know why I've been so afraid to try things in life, but I determined after I got into college that I was going to learn how to overcome my fears. I was tired of living in fear. I graduated college in 96, and since then I've traveled across the country and around the world, over seven African countries, China and Europe. I've authored two published books, produced an independent feature film, and I have a wonderful wife and son. I still get afraid, afraid when I encounter the unknown, but I learned how to not let that fear control me, for the most part. Now let me share five steps with you that I learned about overcoming fear. If you begin to do them, the possibility for a better life will be within your grasp. Number one, understand that fear is a choice that we make. Will Smith in his upcoming movie After Earth has a quote that I like. Danger is real. Fear is a choice. Now many of us are afraid of situations that aren't even dangerous, but they're merely uncomfortable, new and unknown to us. And danger doesn't automatically mean failure, but being fearful will most certainly lead to our diminished capacity. When we choose to be fearful, it's like placing ourselves in a chokehold. We literally close ourselves off to seeing the solutions to our problems. But when we understand that fear is our choice, then we can begin to make different decisions. Number two, we need to own our fear. Don't let your fear dictate your actions. Own it. You have to look your fear in the face and begin to understand the motivation behind your fear. When you understand the motivation behind your fear, you can determine if it's valid or not. Then you can create a course of action for making sure that your fear does not paralyze you. One such action you can take is to study the thing which makes you afraid. We often fear what we don't understand. If we spend time studying the thing or situation that scares us, then we demystify it. Own your fear not the other way around. Number three, learn to press through fear. Most people we deem as courageous, like firefighters, police officers, surgeons, soldiers, they will tell you that they are often afraid while doing certain aspects of their jobs. It's normal to be afraid about an unknown outcome. We're human. But it's abnormal to allow ourselves to remain in fear. Courage is not the absence of fear, but it's doing what needs to be done even while we're afraid. As we consistently begin to press through our fear, those fears will diminish. Number four, hang around others who have already worked through their fears. <laughs> I had a more than healthy fear of water when I was in middle school. It was one of my mother's gifts to me. Now, my dad was a strong swimmer, and one day we were at a backyard 
barbecue, standing by the poolside, talking to a friend of his who was a lifeguard. My dad says, my son doesn't know how to swim. He's too afraid to learn. The lifeguard turned and looked at me and said, you don't know how to swim? The next moment, <laughs> I saw a blue sky and puffy white clouds before being swallowed up whole by the backyard pool. I fought to get to the surface and I was thrashing around and I had cried out for help and a lifeguard said, stand up. He threw me into the four foot section. I was over five feet tall. So I stood, coughed up some water and yelled, what you do that for? He and my dad started laughing hysterically and he said, how else are you going to learn how to overcome your fear? In reality, I wasn't in any real danger. All I had to do was stand up. And if for some reason I couldn't stand, there were two strong swimmers ready to jump into the water to save me. If you hang around those who have already overcome their fears, you will most likely do the same. Just don't be surprised when they throw you into the pool. Number five, pray. The Bible states that God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. We may become afraid, but we are not to stay afraid. Pray and ask God to give you the strength to overcome your fears and to use the tools that are at your disposal to do so. Often our fears are tied into our perceived inability. God's word states that we have been given power. That's capability, the ability to be successful in the areas that we apply ourselves in. We have been given love. The fact that we are not alone in our struggles, no matter how it seems. And we have been given a sound mind. The ability to reason out situations for what they really are. Thereby nullifying fear at its root. So I've just shared with you five ways to overcome fear. Technically six if you go back and look at step two. Put them into action and watch your life begin to change. It's not about being fearless. It's about fearing less.